Sutta said, O Brahmanas, once Narada, the excellent sage, son of Brahma, was inclined to perform penance, controlling himself very much. There is a very beautiful cave in the Himalaya mountain, near which the celestial river flows rapidly. There was a great hermitage of divine splendor, which was resplendent in many ways. Narada, endowed with divine vision, went there to perform penance. On seeing the hermitage very convenient for penance, the leading sage performed penance for a long time, seated firmly and steadily, keeping silent, controlling the breath and retaining the purity of the intellect. O Brahmanas, the sage performed meditation and contemplation, wherein the realization, I am Brahman, is generated, leading to direct perception of Brahman. When the great sage Narada was thus performing penance, the mind of Indra became excessively agitated, and he trembled. Thinking, this sage is yearning for my kingdom, Indra wanted to spoil it. Indra, the leader of devas, remembered Kamadev, Cupid, who arrived there immediately, accompanied by his queen, Rati, and his friend, Vasanta, Spring. The king of devas, endowed with crooked intelligence to achieve his interests, saw that Kama had arrived and addressed him thus. Indra said, O friend of great prowess, always doing what is beneficial to me. Please hear lovingly what I am going to say. Render me your help. Strongly supported by you, I have destroyed the pride of many ascetics. O oh friend, the stability of my kingdom is always due to your blessing. Narada the sage is performing penance in the Himalaya mountain directing his mind towards the Lord of the universe with great mental control and firm resolve. I now fear lest he should beg Brahma for my kingdom. You must go there now and hinder his penance. Being thus commanded by Indra, Kamadev, accompanied by his wife Rati and his friend Madhu, went haughtily to that place. He then prepared his own means of attack. He employed all his arts there immediately. Spring, too, haughtily spread his prowess of diverse nature. O great sages, the mind of the sage Narada did not waver. Only the arrogance of these fellows suffered a setback, and that, too, by the favor of Mahesha. O Saunaka and other sages, please listen to the reason thereof. By the controlling power of the Lord, Kama could not exercise any influence. It was in this very place that Shiva, the indefatigable enemy of Kama, had formerly performed a great penance. It was here that Kama was reduced to ashes, Kama who used to spoil the penances of sages. Rati wanted the resuscitation of Kama and requested the devas, they appealed to Lord Shiva, the benefactor of the whole world, who said thus, O oh gods, after some time Kama will come to life again, but none of his tricks will succeed here. Whatever space all round this spot is visible to persons here will be out of the influence of Kama forever, O oh devas. It was due to this statement of Shiva that Kama's wiles did not prevail upon Narada. From Shiva's abode he went to Indra. Kama then narrated everything about the sage and commended his power. At Indra's bidding, Kama returned to his own place. Deluded by Shiva's maya, Indra was unaware of the true facts. He was greatly surprised and admired Narada. Shiva's maya is incomprehensible to all. The whole universe is deluded by it. Only the true devotees and dedicated souls escape. Backed by Shiva's blessings, Narada stayed in the hermitage for a long time. Then, realizing that his penance was complete, the sage concluded it. 
Thinking that he had conquered Kama, Narada was puffed with pride. He was devoid of true knowledge and deluded by Shiva's Maya. O great sages, blessed and very blessed is Shiva's Maya. Even Vishnu, Brahma, and others do not know the turn it takes. In that state of delusion and puffed-up arrogance, the great sage Narada went to Kailash to expatiate on his own achievement. Bowing down to Rudra, the sage arrogantly spoke of his exploits with the conviction that he was equal to the noble-souled lord, the conqueror of Kama, Shiva. On hearing it, Shiva, who was favorably disposed to his devotees, advised Narada, who was ignorant of the real cause, whose mind had strayed and who had been deluded by his maya. Rudra said, Dear Narada, O oh, wide sage, you are blessed, but please listen to me. Never speak like this anywhere else, especially in the presence of Vishnu. Even when you are asked, you should not mention your achievements as you have done just now. These should be guarded as close secrets and should never be expressed. I bid you specifically like this because you are a great favorite of mine. Since you are a devotee of Vishnu, you are my follower, as all his devotees are. Sutta said, Lord Rudra, the cause of creation, advised him in many ways like this. But Narada, who was still under the influence of Shiva's Maya, did not take up this wholesome advice. The future course of actions shall be considered inevitable by sensible persons. The will of Shiva cannot be warded off by anyone. Then the great sage went to Brahma's world. After saluting Brahma, he told him about his conquest of Kama as a result of his penance. On hearing that, Brahma remembered the lotus-like feet of Shiva and knew thereby the true cause. He then forbade his son. Although foremost among the wise, Narada did not take up the advice of Brahma as he had been deluded by Shiva's maya. The sprout of ignorance had been so fixed in his mind. Everything will take place in the world in the manner Shiva wills. It is true that the entire universe is dependent on his will. Narada hastened to Vishnu Loka in the same state of senseless arrogance to boast of his exploits in the presence of Vishnu. When Vishnu saw Narada approaching, he could guess the purpose of his visit. He stood up and received him cordially. He walked forward and embraced him lovingly. He made Narada sit comfortably. After remembering the lotus-like feet of Shiva, he frankly uttered these words intended to quell the arrogance of Narada. Vishnu said, O oh dear Narada, foremost among sages, you are blessed. I am sanctified by your visit. May I know where you come from and why you have come? On hearing these words of Vishnu, the sage Narada felt elated. He narrated his story in the same haughty manner. On hearing the arrogant words of the sage, Vishnu remembered the lotus-like feet of Shiva again and understood the true cause. Vishnu, a leading devotee of Shiva, with his soul dedicated to Shiva, bowed his head and eulogized Parameshwara, the lord of the holy mountain, with his palms joined in reverence. Vishnu said, O Lord, O Lord Mahadev, Parameshwara, be pleased. O Shiva, thou art blessed. Thy maya enchants everyone. Having thus chanted the prayer to Shiva, the supreme Atman, he closed his eyes meditated on his lotus-like feet, and stopped. On coming to know what Shiva was about to do, through Shiva's bidding, he addressed the great sage pleasantly. Vishnu said, O oh, foremost among sages, you are blessed. You are the storehouse of austerities and large-hearted. O oh, sage, lust and delusion rise only in the heart of that man who is devoid of the three types of devotion. 
base passions that bring in their wake all sorts of miseries crop up in him instantly. But you are vowed to perpetual celibacy. You are ever endowed with knowledge and devoted to non-attachment. Unaffected by passion and highly intelligent by nature, how can you be swayed by lust? On hearing words like these, the great sage laughed within himself, but spoke to Vishnu humbly. Narada said, O oh Lord, what can Kama do to me if you remain favorable to me? Saying so, the sage who had paid a casual visit bowed to Vishnu and left.